Americans yeah. have now been consuming genetically modified organisms, or GMOs, for 20 years. They account for 80% of processed foods today. But the battle on whether they're safe or not still continues. I'd say one of the, you know, the biggest mistakes, you know, that we made, and, you know, I certainly, uh, you know, I, I feel, you know, personally involved with this, that we didn't do the type of communication and, and have the kind of dialogue with consumers that we should have. Dr. Robert Fraley created GMOs in the early 90s for Monsanto, which is now the world's largest manufacturer of GMO seeds and seller of the controversial weed killer Roundup which has been under fire by non-GMO activists for decades. Stop poisoning our food, Monsanto. We don't want it. GMOs have only been around for 20 years. How do we know for sure? Is that enough time that we know for sure that GMOs are safe? The crops have been in the market for 20 years, but GMOs have actually been around since the 1970s because GMOs are now used to, to produce, you know, half of the new drugs that we take. So it's been used across a lot of industry for decades. It's thoroughly studied and the track record has been superb. If GMOs are safe, why not label them? We think that the voluntary labeling approaches that are out there make a lot of sense. So, you know, today, you know, if a consumer doesn't want to, you know, consume a GMO product, they can consume an organic product. And consumers are. The demand for non-GMO products are growing rapidly. The biggest food companies in America are starting to come to us and ask to get their products non-GMO project verified, which is really exciting because ultimately it means the consumer wins and they have more access to non-GMO choices. Megan Westgate, the director of the non-GMO project, says the U.S. is one of the only countries in the world that doesn't have GMO labeling. There's 64 other countries have labels. And so there was no way for shoppers here to find whether or not a product had GMOs. So we created the Non-GMO Project to offer a consistent third-party verification program and a label that people can easily look for when they're shopping. Westgate and her team also want to educate consumers about the dangers of consuming GMOs. I think there's a lot of confusion out there and a lot of that is um, encouraged by the biotech companies because they tell people that genetic engineering is an extension of conventional breeding and that it's no different and so that makes a lot of people confused. The reality though is that genetic engineering specifically involves rearranging DNA in ways that don't happen in conventional breeding that can't happen in nature. Why was there a need for GMOs in the first place? Well, you know, here, here's the big picture. Uh, you know, world population continues to grow. You know, we have 7.2 billion people today. You know, by the time you're my age, uh, there's going to be, you know, 10 billion people. You know, the demand for food between now and 2050 doubles. And so we need all kinds of new technologies to help farmers produce more food to, to feed uh, the world. Today, 88% of our corn in the U.S. is genetically modified while over 30 countries, including Russia, have banned their use. Still, Fraley says he's proud to be one of the leading GMO scientists and now wants to educate people on their importance. I think we can provide a lot of the answers to the questions that people have. The one thing Monsanto and the Non-GMO Project both agree on is that the power to choose belongs solely to the consumer, you. I'm Jade Scipioni for FoxBusiness.com.